everyone, and welcome back to Pediatric Therapy Essentials. My name is Dr. Heather Sossaman, and I'm a pediatric physical therapist. In this week's episode, we're going to be talking about my top 10 school readiness skills with a twist. So stick around. Hi everyone, and welcome back. If you're new to this channel, thanks for stopping by today. And if you've been here before, I'm glad to see you back. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so and turning on notifications so that you know when I have a new video out for you. And if you enjoyed today's video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. In this week's episode, we're gonna be talking about my top 10 school readiness skills for kids. As a school-based physical therapist, the primary focus of my job is ensuring that kids have access to their educational environment. So what do I mean by access? By definition, access means the ability to enter, get near, or use something. In the school environment, it means physical access to the school campus. So the ability to get in and out of classrooms, in and out of the cafeteria, on and off the bus but it can also mean access to the curriculum, so the ability to participate in classroom activities and assignments. So that brings us to my top 10 list. Everything on this list has to do with the ability to access a school campus and school environment. So let's dive into that top 10. Number one on my list is the ability to walk in line with your peers. Children get around their school campus by walking in line. And though this task may seem simple, it's actually a pretty complex activity. For children to be able to walk in line, they of course need the ability to walk, and that can be with or without an assistive device. And they need the endurance to go from one location to the next, but they also need the ability to visually process their environment, take in all of the visual information out there, and then use it to stay in line and not bump into the child in front of them. So when you think about it, walking in line is pretty complex. If your child is having difficulty walking in line with their peers, there's some easy things you can do at home to help them practice. Start by allowing your child to be the line leader. Let them walk around the house with you and maybe some of their siblings following behind. Allow them to stop and start and watch how everyone else in line stops and starts with them. Once they get the hang of it, switch places and you be the line leader. As you walk around your house, stop, start, and turn in both directions and see if they can do the same. If they're still having a little bit of trouble, you might want to give them a verbal cue before you stop. I usually drag mine out and say, and stop, to give them a cue that I'm going to stop. The better they get, the fewer cues they'll need. Number two on my school readiness list is stair negotiation. Most school campuses, believe it or not, have stairs on them, even if it's not a two-story campus. If it is a two-story campus, of course there's gonna be stairs between the floors. And if a child has movement limitations that don't allow them to climb the stairs, elevators are usually available. But if you look closely at school campuses, you'll find that stairs are in other sneaky locations. For example, if you have an auditorium, most auditoriums have three or four stairs stepping up to the stage. In the school campuses I work on, most of my music rooms have three or four steps up to them. And of course, getting on and off the bus requires a child to be able to negotiate stairs. If your child's having trouble negotiating stairs, simply practice with them. If you don't have stairs in your house to practice on, try a playground. Most pieces of play equipment have stairs on them. Begin by practicing with you holding your child's hands and work to the point where they can be independent. Remember that climbing stairs up is much easier than going down, so don't be surprised if your child masters going up before they master going down. And on a school campus, climbing stairs isn't done in an isolated, quiet environment. Most of the time when kids are climbing stairs on a school campus, they're doing it in line with their peers, there's other students on the stairs talking and making noise, so all of those other environmental obstacles can make stair climbing more of a challenge. Number three on my list is packing and unpacking a backpack. So buying your first backpack for school is usually really exciting for kids, but learning how to pack it and unpack it can be a little bit of a challenge. 
Packing a backpack requires that a child be able to hold on to the object and have the fine motor skills to unzip and zip the bag. It also requires that their balance and coordination be pretty good in order to hold the bag and manipulate the objects inside without falling over. Before your child starts school, take time at home to practice packing and unpacking their backpack. Number four on my list is negotiating curbs. Curbs are pretty similar to stairs, with the exception of having a railing. Most locations with curbs to go up and down don't have anything to hold on to. So in order to practice this skill at home, you can use the bottom step on a flight of stairs, or if you don't have anywhere at home to practice, again, you can go to a playground and try the bottom step on the stairs there. When I practice curbs with students, I usually begin by holding both of their hands. I work down to holding one hand, and then hopefully they get it on their own. Just like with climbing stairs, it's always easier to learn to go up the curb, and it takes a little bit more time and practice to learn to step down. Number five on my list is opening and closing doors. If you've ever opened your child's classroom door, more than likely, it's a really heavy, big door. And when you start school and think about the size of pre-K and kindergartners, that door is huge relative to them. So practicing the ability to pull open that heavy door is a great thing to do before your kids start school. If you don't have a heavy door in your house, simply put your hand on the door as your child pulls and this simulates the door being more heavy or more difficult to pull. Our next item, number six, is holding that big heavy door open. One of the most coveted jobs in an elementary classroom is door holder. It comes second only to line leader. And for kids to be able to take on that position, they've got to learn how to hold that big heavy door open. Now, most of us don't have industrial types doors in our home, so practicing this skill can be a little tricky. Begin by allowing them to push open and hold a regular door that doesn't have any resistance to it at all. Teach them to pull the door open and then back their little bodies up to the door using their bottom and their back to hold the door in place. Once they've mastered the idea of how to do it and the motor plan, then you can move on to doing it with resistance. Again, use your hand to provide some resistance to the door. Number seven on my list also relates to steps, going up and down a large step. So if you've ever been on a school campus, you'll notice that the playground usually has one large step to get onto the piece of equipment. If your child happens to ride the bus, you'll also notice that the first step on and off the bus is usually pretty large. And again, when you think about the size of pre-K and kindergarten kiddos, this can be quite a challenge. So to practice going up and down a large step is really similar to a curb. Simply allow the child to step up and down a step of regular size in your home or out in the community. As they master that height, slowly increase the height of the steps that you allow them to practice on. Over time, their muscles will get strong enough and their bodies will learn the coordination and movement patterns it takes to climb up and down. Number eight on my list is learning how to negotiate playground equipment. This skill rarely gets any complaints from me when I'm working with students on it. They love to go outside and play during recess. Most school campuses have playgrounds that are age appropriate for the size and skill level of the child playing on the equipment. So the best way to practice is simply to take your child to the park and allow them to play and learn the equipment. Remember that just like with stairs and walking in line, when your child plays on a playground at school, they're not going to be by themselves. So there's going to be other children running around, making noise, bumping into them from time to time. So they really need to be well practiced at how to play on a playground. If your child's just learning this skill, I like to start with climbing the stairs and going down the slide. Those two tasks are some of the simpler ones on a playground and they're very rewarding. As they master that skill, then I move on to things like ladders, climbing walls, and walking across wobbly bridges. Number nine is kind of a funny one to most people, but it's actually something that I look at every day when I'm working with students, and that's their ability to push the button on a water fountain. Pushing and holding that large button can be kind of difficult if you've never done it before. 
Now because of COVID-19, using a water fountain is probably not something we're all doing right now, but you can still practice this concept with your child. If you happen to have board games like Taboo or Simon, they usually have a button toy associated with the game. Allow your child to practice pushing that button and holding it for maybe 10 seconds with constant pressure. That's what's required to push the water fountain button. You can also have them count to you as they hold the button to simulate the idea of drinking water or doing two things at one time. Number 10 on my list is maneuvering obstacles. Most classrooms have desks and furniture placed throughout the classroom that children have to learn to walk around to get around the room. But they also have to remember that there could be backpacks, lunch boxes, water bottles that may occasionally be on the floor. So children need to learn how to walk around and look for obstacles in their path so they don't trip. Oftentimes they have to do this carrying something, like a paper they're turning into their teacher. So practicing this skill is pretty simple. Place a few obstacles down your hallway, pillows, stuffed animals, books, and have your child walk around the obstacles without touching anything. If you want to make the task a little more difficult, play some music or talk to your child so they have to concentrate on more than one thing at a time. I hope you enjoyed a PT's version of the top 10 list of school readiness skills and you're able to practice some of them at home with your child this weekend. And if you'd like more information on the topic we talked about today, you can head over to the blog post on my website, pediatrictherapyessentials.com. And if you'd like even more pediatric therapy essentials in your life, please check us out on social media, Pinterest, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks for stopping by today. I hope you guys have a great week, and I'll see you next Saturday. Bye.